1971, Season 1, Episode 2, Ransom for a Dead Man. Les, I'll tape a memo for you on the Bronson matter tomorrow. As far as these four corporation suit is concerned, they got me. As far as I can see, they're holding firm. They want $300,000. They want delivery tomorrow night. They got me. Leslie, I thought. Hello, Pat. Leslie, listen. About the tennis date. I know. Been very forgetful lately. Please call me in the office tomorrow. It's 12.15 sharp. They just, just say tennis and I'll remember to put it in, on my office calendar. All right, Pat. Goodbye. How did you sustain these injuries, Mr. Cromwell? This Saturday, 16th. Friday, you admitted to a hospital for emergency care on that night. Yes, I was. I was sent to John's Hospital, Santa Monica. Your Honour, I would like to deduce these hospital records as a bit of A. It's Cornwell. What was the extent of your injuries due to your fall? My back was hurt real bad. Objection, Your Honour. The plaintiff is not competent to give expert medical testimony. Sustained. I'd like to deduce it as a bit B. A full doctor's report of plaintiff's condition showing damage to the lumbar region of the spine with a concordant nerve damage resulting in partial paralysis. Paralysis on left side of his body. Do you find anything out? You find anything out? Anything? No one has ever seen or heard from him since he left Phoenix. Did you check the hospitals? I did, Nancy. I had Nancy calling in the morning. Not a thing. Well, the police, zero. Shall we? Let me think about it for a while. Objection. Irrelevant in material sustained. The answer may no may go out. Shall we put it uh, out a missing person's report? I'll do it myself after lunch. How does it how goes it in here? We have a nice middle class jury. A dislike of the insurance companies is second only to this it states working class people, Mr Cornwell. You're a punch press press presser. Operator, is that correct? You have you been on welfare before? Objection sustained. Night that you fell down the stairs into the defendant's apartment house. Where had you been prior to your accident? A calf across the street. If in point of fact, Mr Cornwell, according to the bartender that he had, you had at least three drinks and no dinner before you left the calf and returned to your apartment. You not and not being able to see the stairwell steps properly when you fell. Objection, Your Honour. Cancer testifying and assuming facts not in, ev- not in evidence. Plaintiff alleges the stairs were improperly lit, although the plaintiff may well have been. Objection. Sustained. Court recessed until one o'clock. Convince my client to discuss a possible settlement. I'm sure you have. My office in ten minutes, mine at twelve thirty. Looks good, very good. I'll get your insurance company off the hook cheap this time. Being all over that building of yours, and you never better start maintaining a minimum safety sense on the or next time somebody may get killed. Hi, Mrs. Williams, Michael. Have you heard anything? There's still no word for Mr. Williams. I tried everywhere. Thank you, Nancy. Bring in your pad. We better, we better outline the statement. It'll be here soon. What time do you have, Michael? At least. You're asking one hundred fifty thousand. I guess it's that he would say that his client is ill, needs cash, and offer him to settle for half. They would tell him his client is losing, we take that he can get with a nuisance value of about hundred ten thousand. And ten thousand that's hitting him pretty hard. Yes, one word, tennis, don't forget. What what who is this? Hello? What is it? Better call the police. Man on the phone says he's got my husband. What well, men posted here and here. But keep him out of sight. I don't want a lot of worried neighbours calling the police every five minutes. Mr. Carlson, Hoffman, this is Carlson. We don't want any press leaks on this. Now listen, I don't want to have to add up all the favours you owe me. I assure you, don't want me to either. We stay out of the papers for the time being, Mrs. Williams. Thank you. Is that tapping ready? Not quite yet, sir. We are able to monitor any phone calls that come in through Miss Miss Williams. Well, we will be able to trace the calls, maybe. I thought the kidnapper is usually smart enough to keep the calls short, so you won't have the time. 
For this tape, we can make the voice prints of the lab. That sometimes gives us a lead on such, but I'm making identifications. There's something I'd like to have to ask you. I want you to completely be, be completely honest with me. Of course, I want to pay the ransom. What are the chances of my getting my husband back? All right, I'll be honest with you, Mrs. Williams. There's no way of knowing. All we can do is hope for the best. We'll do anything we possibly can. Oh, oh of course you will. I know that, Mrs. Look, Mrs. Williams. Let's try to have an optimistic point of view on this. Probably just fine. Then I'll have him with you in another 24 hours. That's all I want. Excuse me, Carlson? Yes, I'll hold. Miss Williams, Lieutenant Colombo, local police, seem to have dropped my pen out of here somewhere. Just a minute. Would you like some help? Oh, no. That won't be necessary. Thank you very much. I'll just take another quick look. I, I can get a flashlight. I really don't bother. It's all right. I got some t- matches. I'm oh, in no trouble, really. It's not that important. It's just a pen. You see, the grade. That was the only reason. But I bought another one. I'll buy. Uh, but I'll buy another one and have that one engraved. You see, the pen itself is worth. Is that? Where there? Is everything all right, Mrs. Colonials? The Sven Combo lost his pen. Well, listen, don't bother him with about it. Sven Combo? Yes. Oh, yes. How do you do? How do you do? Ah, uh, Miss Williams, I think we can forget about the pen now. Would you like me to get you a flashlight? No, really? Is that a, it's not that important. They called me. The last call was from the police. They found your husband's car. Was there any sign of violence? None whatsoever. How do you suppose they stopped it? The car was found near a stop sign. So he assumed that when your husband pulled out to his intersection, Kim never found the opportunity. Uh, Mr. Carlson, there's a gentleman here to see you. Ah, oh, Lieutenant. Yes, gentlemen, this is Lieutenant Colombo, our local police liaison. How do you do? As I was saying, police sign suggests that you. Is there something we can do for you? Lieutenant, oh, well, I dropped by to tell you. They found the car. We found, we already had that invention. I could see that. How's the tap? In it? How's the tap incoming? Not yet. Feel perfectly free to say if you like. If you like, don't. Oh, thank you, thank you very much, Jerry. I like to get a, a man. Check out the house. Man to check out the house is. In the area where the car was found, uh, somebody may have seen something or heard something last night. Start from sunset and work your way up. Oh, in Hammond, be sure to set get the lab report on a briefcase of luggage found in the car. Miss Carson, do you suppose the kidnappers followed him all the way from Phoenix? I doubt that, Mrs. Williams. They must have known when he left Phoenix. That's what makes us think they may have had some someone. They're checking out the time of departure. See if that's true. They could notify the Confederates here, and they should, could. The tenant would like to see the ransom note. Huh? Oh, certainly. Do you know exactly what time your husband would left? Would have left Phoenix. Excuse me. May I see the envelope, please? No, no, I didn't. Neither did anyone in my office. Harmon. Which police carriage would you like? To have you t- taken the? But they're taking the car to downtown. Range for your people to run and set fingerprints. You know, strange thing, Mr. Williams. Mr. Williams, when you look at the route to your husband, must have taken that. What, what is that? An area map? Oh, I see. That's it for. Can you instructions from the kidnappers? Oh, they sent instructions. What were they? What are they? Well, Mr. Williams, it is to fly alone north along this highway. When she reaches this this point on the map, she takes her heading out across the desert. Now we've been we've been flashing lights, signal right about there, and the money is to be dropped in a bag. The usual warning to no cops. What well, when is this drop? We don't know. It's like it says they call us at tonight. Listen, Miller. The car the victim's car has been been packed up by the L A P D. They've got it in the downtown garage. What they want what I want to do is run a fingerprint check on it for us, will you? Are you flying plane by yourself? No kidding, no kidding, yeah. He probably gave you a little static. 
But like, we're going on the basis that a victim across the state. Like, excuse me? Well, how's it going? How are you? Fine, but go- we're, through, we're through a few minutes. I have to wait till he gets off the phone before we can check it out. Fascinating, right? Well, let me know if you have any problems, right? Can I have, help you, Lieutenant? No, just browsing. But anything in particular? Because if there's anything you like, I'd be able to, too happy to help. Oh, thank you very much. Miss Williams, our men's room on the powder room is up those steps, down the hall, at first door on your right. Have you got that? First door on your right. I'll be I'll ready in a minute, Mr. Carlson. One, two, three, four. House is cold. I must say, Mrs. Williams, you're bearing up for this well, very well indeed. You may seem like it, but if, but if, if it wasn't for you, well, that's very kind of you, Mrs. Williams. But we'll just do what we can, that's all. You're very modest. Tell me, do you think you'll find any trace of fingerprints in the car? Frankly, I doubt it. It's a very professional, very planned operation. See, they knew that what time your husband was coming out of town. They knew about you flying a plane. Now I think the only fingerprints we find would be your husband's. And girls, of course, do you, did you find it in the tent? Oh, yes. Well, well, madam. Thank you. Listen, I have to tell you, Mrs. Williams, you've got some beautiful lace here. You just made yourself a home. Make yourself a home. See, you know the soap in the bathroom. A bunch of like little lemons. Well, I was almost afraid to use them. That's what they're there for, the tent to be used. Well, if you don't mind my asking, when you use one, you put it back in the plate. How do you keep it from sticking to the others? That's a problem. That's for how I figured. Do you know what I think? I think since we're going, we're waiting here. I'm going to fix us all dinner. Oh, it won't be necessary, Mrs. Williams. We can have something sent in. Oh, please let me do it. It will keep me busy. All right. Thank you, Mrs. Williams. Don't you know have any light living servants? Oh, must be the same problem elsewhere, everywhere. If you want something done, you've got to do it yourself. How is that, Lieutenant? Oh, I just say you pay a lot of money for help. You end up doing the cooking. Well, you see, my housekeeper been on vacation for last week. Oh, so I see. You've been you've been here alone. Well, listen. If there's anything I can do to to do to help people take this, whatever you feel free. Oh, you'll be the first to know. Les, Miss Williams, Paul, they got me. They what? When tomorrow night? Just for the instructions. Paul, Paul, play it back. Are you sure you we got all of it? This is that's it. That's this way. From this point on the highway, on here, one hundred fifty miles of diet desert. No way. We're going to cover all of it. There's Paul. They got me. They want three hundred thousand dollars tomorrow night. Just follow instructions. I'm not going to take any chances. My husband's life. There's nothing to worry about, Mrs. Williams. The rain you have to follow by helicopter. Give you plenty of room. I know you will. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to sound like that. You're quite all right, Mrs. Williams. We understand how you feel. I think I'll go upstairs. I'll be in my room if you want me. That's a good idea. Be covering the place all night. So you want rest easy. All right, that's that's it for tonight, fellas. Let's wrap up and go home. Get his tape on the lab to lab right away. Good night, sir. Good night. Check with you in the morning. Well, Lieutenant, guess that's that. That's it for the night, Lieutenant. Let's call it night, huh? Oh, sorry. Thinking there. Nick woman, what's that? I say she's a sexual woman. What do you mean? Well, when the phone rang, she... She ran to the phone. She picked up the receiver. She ever asked her husband, ever asked her husband if he's all right. Don't see anything strange about that. The woman was frightened and stressed. That's right. She was. She was under stress. So I can't help thinking that if I was, I was in the hand of some kidnappers. Wife didn't ask me if they, if I was okay. I think about it. I think about it. What's your point, Lieutenant? Point? No point. Just that she's a unique person. Good night, Lieutenant. Now, if you just initial here and sign here, here, oh, on all three copies, We've got all the serial numbers, yes, sir. Bank was very cooperative with helping us mark the money. We certainly appreciate your help. You're welcome. Part for your savings, trust accounts and municipal bonds. We're naturally forced to sell all your life stocks at a considerable loss. I'm sorry, but there's no other alternative. I know that, Mrs. Perkins, Mr. Perkins, there's no time to worry about money. Of course, Mrs. Williams. 
I have brought a bag, Mrs. Williams. I'm not thinking. By the minister, we have a bag. You should do it. You don't need me any longer, gentlemen. Thanks again, Mr. Williams. We've got a priority clearance on that air corridor. Marked on the map. You, we all, you'll be all by yourself. What about you? Be holding position about two miles behind you. You probably keep your people clear of the area. Highway patrol units all have instructions. If they spot a car picking up the money, they just make a derivation and let it pass. Chances are they get the money clear out before anyone gets a chance to get near them. So I wouldn't worry too much about that, that Mr. Williams. A certain amount of his husband's life, of course. If you gentlemen excuse me, I'll, I'll change. Well set, Mrs. Williams. I'm ready. Let's go. You're right. You are in real, certainly, certainly. We will talk. Press this button. When you listen, just release it. You're clear. Eight five three three to five. Romeo. What was that? What was that? I think they say you rolled the monitor motor. I think take it easy, Lieutenant. Everything's just fine. This is eight three five Romeo. We read you eight three five Romeo. Approaching northbound freeway, descending to a thousand feet. Airspeed one fifty. You're holding position on your heading. Airspeed one fifty. How much further is it? How much further is it? How much further is it? She notify us when she approaches the Pamdale turn off. Is that near? You see that highway down there to the real right? Yes, I do. She'll be heading off across the desert. The next coordinates. That is the A835 Romeo. Approaching coordinates. Begin new heading 20 degrees northwest. We read you at a speed at 150. This is 30 feet foxtrot to all ground units. We're approaching the Palmdale turn off. Monitor, maintain radio sites until original contact is established. Right, this is 835 Romeo, 835 Romeo. Established visual contact with the light. A spot across the road by coordinates 28. We read you, circling now to make drop. This is 33 Fox Drop to Special Highway Patrol Units, 12 and 22. Move towards, move, move towards Access Road near Met Corner 28. Drop completed. Over and out, they got it. A sign of them, no, sir. A highway. There's a highway only half a mile that way. With a lot of heavy traffic. It must have gotten loose, lost in there uh, before we got here. You knew what's going. We knew that going in, didn't we, Mister Larson? What? What to look at? Went to look at this. All right, let's go home, Lieutenant. Lieutenant Columbo, let's go. Here, Lieutenant, I'll take that. Are you coming, Lieutenant? No. Why do you go ahead? I'm going to make, take a little walk, clear my throat, head. You know what I mean? How is my father? What are you, are you doing here? How is he? Have you heard about it? Asked him? No, not yet. But you paid the kidnappers ransom money. When will they bring him back? We don't know. I wasn't expecting you. After I got the cable, I caught the first plane on the afternoon at Zurich. It was only 30 minute layover. You didn't have to come. What do you mean? It's you, it's you, don't want, didn't want me to? What I mean is that there's nothing for you to do here. Let's drop the plate, church raid, Leslie. I hate you as much as you hate me, maybe more. You don't have to play the man to stepmother to me anymore. I outgrow that. So you see, all the expensive education in Switzerland isn't, isn't a total loss, Margaret. We've twelve tired, we're both upset. I assure neither of us wants to say anything. I don't mean... I may be sorry for later. Why don't we get some sleep? Tomorrow may be a long day. Margaret, I'm worried. I love you too. I haven't been able to sleep. It's terrible. I'm terribly nervous. Margaret, I'm afraid. I don't want anything to happen to you. I know, I know. Don't worry, don't worry. A little early. A late show. No calls except to say they haven't heard anything. They, they've got the buzz of some kind on the street watching the house. They got the, uh, the fans of some kind of watch, some kind of watching a, on the street, watching the house. Federal agents, there's nothing in the paper about Daddy for the good numbers. You want to get out of the press after ra radio intelligence and waiting for the news. Where are you going? I have a date in court. How can you do that? I mean, how can I, you function? It seems like a strange time to play lady lawyer. 
Sunday, when you take an out of responsibilities, you find out you don't always have a choice. You have to function no matter what. I guess I'm lucky I'm still responsible, because all I can think about is my father, no more than I. Why didn't you try to be occupy yourself, something, Margaret? I mean, something besides television, running up overseas telephone bills. You might find it past the time more quickly. I'll call you the moment I hear anything, Leslie. Good luck. With your, your case, thank you, Margaret. Now about turning, now when turning, turning crosses them you about that incident, cry, accident, crying, and what everything, especially when he asks you how fast you're going when you hit the car. Excuse me. Just sit down here. And let me be, 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 give me the brief, Mike, Leslie. Have you found my husband? Can we talk to you private for a moment? You can tell me here. I think we'd better speak private. Just tell me. Did you find my husband? Please, Mrs. Williams. Will you tell me? Is he right? Your husband's dead, Mrs. Williams. Are you right, Mrs. Williams? Give me a moment. Can we get you a doctor? Arrange? Have you driven home? I'm sorry it was done. Did you say where the body was? No. I don't think so. I uh, Listen, one more thing, Mr. Carson. You didn't ask how her husband was killed, did she? No. Is that is that what if uh, that's what I thought? All right, Lieutenant. What's bothering you now? No, nothing. Something's bothering you. Just that up until now, you know, she was very cool. She was very composed. And suddenly she fell apart in front of other people. I don't see anything so strange about that. No, convenient, maybe. Come, look, Lieutenant. Do you think she's had something to do with the kidnapping? Just come out and say so. Look, I'm not. Look, I'm sorry. I don't mean to be upset you. You asked me what was bothering me. I told you. Let's understand this one thing. If you start harassing this woman, I'm going to take you upstairs. Just one minute, Mr. Carson. You see, it's like this. This is not just a kidnapping. This is murder now. I think, and I could have figured that to my department. I see you around. I'll give Margaret an injection. Put her to bed. You'll be asleep soon. Oh, God. Take two of these before you go to bed. It put you out all night long. Thank you. I can't thank you enough. Right, all of you. We let you... Get some rest now. You're so brave. Call me if you need me. Good night, darling. Now take care of yourself, Miss Williams. We're keeping a man on the house for the next few days. If there's anything else we can do, no, thank you. Good night. Good night. Let us pray. Oh, Lord, we implore you to grant your dead mercy to this milk servant. That he should have held fast or to your will by his intentions may not receive punishment in return for his deeds. So does the true faith unite him, the strong on the faith, faith on earth. Your mercy may unite him, accompany the chorus of angels in heaven. If we love Christ our Lord, eternal rest granted upon him. O Lord, let potential light shine on him. May he rest in peace. May his soul, may his souls of his spiritual parted. Through the mercy of God, rest in peace. My deepest sympathy for you, Mrs. To you, Mrs. Williams. I pray you be comforted. God, peace be with you. Leslie, yes, Margaret. This is what you wanted, wasn't it? Isn't it? Are you right? I'm all right. It's all right. It's nothing. I'm all right. Are you right? Yes, thank you. Who are you? Say, so Columbo, I'm for the police, local police. Is there ever anything you want? You're not alone. Remember, I'm always available. You better come. I'm waiting for you. I see now what you mean about her, Des. She's bought and completely selfish. No, Pat, you can't blame her. Paul and I both indulged her too much, I guess. It was our fault. See, she was mine, growing a step or not. I would kick her out right now without a dime. Pat, I think Liz should let get should get some rest. Yes, I think so too. You got to make her grow up, Liz. Are you you are you right? Yes, I know I am now. Thank you very much. Goodbye, Liz. I have to tell you how much I appreciate everything. You have been so, such good friend, Pam. Paul, I love you. So he loved you, you all. You all. So do I. We call, love you. I'll call tomorrow. Margaret, Margaret, come here, please. I know you're up there. Listen, you might as well come down. Do you call, Mother dear? I think we'd better have a talk. Oh, of course, Mother dear. Margaret, I'm willing to overlook the incident at the cemetery. I ran it off as a solicit hysteria. But I'm not in the mood to tolerate any further outbursts, scarcism, anything of the course. 
You make it very difficult for us to live together. I think you should, could, should go back to school this way again. School doesn't open for another month. It's will be here, there. We have friends in Paris visit them. Lizzie, you're not going anywhere. I'm staying here, right here. Why, this is my home too. Margaret, okay. while we're in the subject of school, I think we'd better talk about something else. Like what for is. Your father? Well, your father and I have kept you very, you very shut for a while on financial affairs, but I think you're ready to face this for certain realities. I didn't have my own trust account, you did. I won't bore you with the details, but since you're not your minor, your father and I have got a joint control account. What happened to it? In order to pay the ransom, was forced to close the account. Well, along with anything else we had, you're trying to tell me that we're broke? Is that it? No, it's not that bad at all. That not as bad as all that. My lawyer persists and law practices a firm will provide us with enough to keep us the streets off the streets of Philadelphia Hills. But there will have to be certain adjustments. You mean my allowance? As that is a good example. How much of a readjustment? I don't know. We'll see what it can come up with. I'll let you know. In the meantime, while you're here for the next couple of weeks, why don't you try to find yourself a job? Pay up some extra cash. Might come in handy. Can I help you? Ten Columbo, I had an appointment. Oh, of course. Gracious. Goodness, you're early. I know. How did you get in? Our gentleman was nice enough to let me in. Miss Williams should be here in a moment. Please, she's never late in appointment. Are ready? Me? I've got this terrible habit. I'm always early. Whatever I have to do to be anywhere, I get there ahead of time. What are you? Are oh, you a legal secretary? Believe it or not, I'm attorney. I call it associate, which means that since the secretary picked it on six, 26, I have to fill in. I don't know how did you do it. Do what? Work for a woman. Well, it doesn't bother me. So it's her and she's one of the best trial with Fernie. Tony's in a state. Good morning, good morning. Have I kept you waiting? No, I'm as early. Oh, good. Well, won't you come in? Shall I hold the coals? I'm sorry to bother you. The first day back and all. That's all right, Lieutenant. I understand the federal people didn't come up with anything, nothing. Not a clue, word, not a clue. Say, there's some phone. That's some phone. What are you... Big on gadgets, I no. I just happened to find that one to get on a on a that one a great help. You see, I say what I want want to get in touch with the client in court. Say, when he's on, I'll get a tape. I just tape the machine. He messages in this machine. Calls my client and does it for me. Boy, it's really something. You know, today you can do everything electronically. I mean, if they wanted to. I bet on that. You wouldn't mind if you, I take down the name list, do you? I mean, maybe I could call the apartment and get in one my office. The pen thinking. These things, they really fascinate me. You know, they've got a new thing today. Like, if they want to take my wife to the boat game, I just start this service for the get tickets. It's all about on a computer. It really is unbelievable. What did you want to see me about, Lieutenant, exactly? Oh, you see, Mr. Williams, now that a murder has been committed, my job to look at this case from all possible angles. I would think it would be your job to catch a dapper on all the federal agents on that. Of course, we have our men on that too. Very assuring, yes, it is, because we do a fine job. But you see, the thing with me, I'm a strange guy, really, I worry. I mean, little things bother me. I'm a warrior. I mean, little significant details. I lose my appetite. I can't eat. My five says to me, you know, you really not, you can really be pain. You know what I mean? Yeah, I get a great dread, dread picture. Why don't you get in on with it? Oh, yeah, sure, right. You see, there are certain things here about your husband kidnapping. A certain detail. Does that, that does his life at work. Well, they really nag me. Such as the bag, for instance. Which bag? A the one they dropped from the plane. The one with the ransom money in it. Don't, didn't I say which bag it was? No, you didn't. Sorry, thought it did. What about the bag? I just thought it was funny that whoever took the money out of the bag, he didn't take the bag with them. What's so funny about that? Oh, you figure a kidnapper is afraid to get caught, cool, so he's not likely to stop, open the bag, take the money out, and run away and leave the bag behind? Well, of course you know more than that. I do, but don't. You don't make... You don't, but people don't, people want to stress act more out of it, immediate emotion and logic. That's absolutely true. In fact, I'll even go further. That's what, that's 
what make, does make criminals most criminals in eventually well then it isn't safe to assume that they would help put the bag see if the money was there and then after the money saw it out of fear of panic take the money out of the bag and run yeah that's probably you're, that's probably right you're probably right i'm sure that is right i mean i don't mean to defend my point about the bag I'm just not using an example to show you the kind of person I am. You understand how details bother me? In other words, I'm trying to show you a what to call it of mine, intercracity. Right, intercracity. Gee, that's a good word. One of the best. Anything else? I'll know. No, I guess that's it. Listen, I want to thank you for taking the time to talk to me. We really should appreciate that. So he helped straighten things out in my mind. Any time, Lieutenant. Thank you again. What? Something else? I don't know what's about me. Now, one more thing. One other thing. The angle of the bullet. What about it? Well, the bullet entered your husband's body at 45 degree angle. What's significant in that? Well, that means your husband's standing. See the way you're standing, Leslie? I thought just the way you're standing. Seeing just the way you're standing. Could I see him just the way I am? From position, could have shot him. I'm sorry? Could you be... Could you have a little wooden table? I'm sorry. Didn't mean to upset you. That's all right. That's all right. Please go on with what you're saying. Listen, I can come back another time. No, really, I'm all right. I want to hear. Are you sure you're all right? There's not much else to say about it. It's just another one of those things that bothers me. I mean, what are your husband? What's your husband doing? Was he just standing there while some other guy, guy sitting down, shot him? Well, at this point, there's no way of knowing, knowing what happened in is there. Right. You're right about that. Right. But the other thing that was peculiar was something else. Hyperman was shot with a twenty two caliber revolver. Well, maybe, maybe most criminals, they use a thirty two or maybe a thirty eight. But this one was different. Sure was. I tried to figure out why twenty two. That's interesting. You see, that it is interesting. What if he wanted to fire it into someone? And as he certainly, he reasonably certain, but it didn't have the velocity to go through the body. But why? Because he didn't want any trace of the crime the room where you shot him. Well, we're giving these teachers of yours a lot of thought, Lieutenant. Listen, I know all these things don't seem much, but put them together on one that top of the other, I tell you, the kidnapping doesn't add up. Let me understand you correctly. Are you applying that this for perhaps not an ordinary kidnapping? That's right. That's interesting, isn't it? Now, if someone was set out to murder your husband, he may he made it look like a kidnapping. The ransom money was all all that was a set up. Is it possible? Look how the how the how the throws us off. We're looking for kidnappers that don't exist. Meanwhile, the girl cut was so close by, could even see him. And all these little details, of yours fall into place. The eye angle of the gun is actually shot by someone he knew. The murderer was sitting down, cut over a bullet, right? Killed in a room where he didn't want to leave any traces. No bullet holes in the wall, for example. Puzzle, empty bag, there's a puzzle. That's a puzzle. I can't figure that one out yet. They turn and all honesty, I might start to tell you. You're collecting one of the most absurd hypotheses ever heard. Nothing that you've said proves anything. One way or another, I know that. I'm not a lawyer. Maybe my theories are not as good as they should be. Miss but Mrs. Williams, I've been a cop for a long, long time. After a few years, believe me, the old nose gets a pretty be pretty good. What do you want me from me? You know how you help could help me. If you could just talk to me about your husband up yourself, maybe I'd come up with somebody, a business associate, a friend who knows that someone who might have a motive to kill him. If I can't, federal men, federal men are walking on the kidnapping. Kind of There's no harm done for the tenant. I don't hold with this murder for yours, Mrs. Lutter. Williams, you're perfectly within your rights. So tell them, let me finish. I will do, however, Whatever I can to help you, whatever it was kill, whoever it is killed my husband, for whatever reason, I want them found. I'm hoping you say that. Michael Lieutenant Clumbo, I'll be at the airport if you need us. Why will we, we be there? I try to get in a few hours flying at least two hours days a week. It's one of those days, besides, I feel if you can get get away from here. Come with me, I'll do a talk. Where? In the plane, Lieutenant. You're afraid of flying? Well, it's not one of my, my secret pastimes. It's great release for me being up here. Lieutenant, all alone, 23, and 
do some of my best thinking up here. Killing, killing, no killing, Miss Williams. Would not do that. You're nervous, of course, no offence. I like this car. I always know this when I'm not driving. Would you like to take over? I beg your pardon? I could teach you how to handle plane an hour. Yes. Well, really, that would be wasting me. I don't intend to fly again. You make me feel terrible. Flying is a wonderful experience. I ruined it by, for you. No, you haven't. I've never been crazy about flying, actually. That's because you've never done it. What does he know? Well, we don't know, we fear. Take a child. No, I'd rather not think it. Well, I'll try it. I want you to feel what ha happens. Really, very, very kind of you. Appreciate that. Why don't you just describe it to me? I, well, I want to show you it, how easy it is to turn it. Are you ready? Ready for what? Here we go. Here. You take the controls. It's not mad. What do you do? Turn the wheel to the left. Keep your feet off the rudder pedal. Pull back to the wheel on the wheel, Lieutenant. No, not that, not too much. Too much. You're overcorrected. Keep the flows, flows up. Planes those up. You see, you have to treat the plane like a woman. You have to treat it gently. You have to treat her very gently. See, watch out, out for the peak. Put it up, put it up. Come on, Lieutenant. Come, put it up, 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 put it up. Brilliant, Lieutenant. You're going to be make an idea each pilot. Like, like it? Appreciate it. You won't talk, don't talk for a while, sure. Can you talk yet? Not yet. Ready? 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 Ask me anything. I'll try to help you the way you will. And you, you any way I can. Did you ever teach your husband how to fly? No, he couldn't learn. Any other questions as well, Mrs. Williams? Do you, do your husband have a personal enemies? Any personal enemies? Do you have any personal enemies? Everyone admired my husband. Respected by his fellow attorneys. Elected in prison at the local bar association. Five or thirty years. You know something beside the applause? There might be someone with evidence. Someone who resents all excess. There was such a person. I never met him. What else? Ah, this is not an easy question. You understand that? Let's go on. Do you know I don't ever have any other relationships with any other women? My husband was never a favour to me. How do you know that? How can you be sure? Because he was a rigid code of ethics from which he never deviated. He must have been quite a man. There's nobody like him. I'm oh, sorry, I can't be no more help to you. That's all right. It's just, you've been a help. Process of relation, you understand that? No further other questions? No, I guess not. Yeah, but then we head back. Oh, we're all right. Yeah, I find. Did you enjoy yourself? Well, it wasn't quite an experience. I mean, I know what you mean when you're relaxing up there. Because I was first started out, I was tense. But now any time, any time, any time. Anyway, you know I was, I have his cousin, cousin. Ralph, his name is Ralph. Anyway, Ralph, ready to say anything you know. I mean, he fought better. He talked better. He made out better. Ralph was the greatest. I mean, Ralph, boy. And Ralph was something, I tell you what, never got him. The point is a story, the ten, a point, a point. No, I don't think there's a point except maybe. You know, maybe that is all that, that when you're talking about your husband and playing. I guess you remind me of Ralph. You see, because Ralph, he was a bore. I mean, he was so perfect there were times for attention him. Yes, well, I changed that. I have to change now, I don't. That's all, fellas. Where his play, her mind is in some place else. Hey, Lieutenant. Well, I bet what do you say, Bert? What do you use? What's the use of kicking? Well, you, you know what's the trouble. You don't have as so much imagination. What do you mean by that? You always look at the menu. You always order chili. My God, you know that's true. What would it be? I uh, look chili, Bert. You see what I mean? Well, I look at this. We never disappointed. Hey! You've got something there? All right, we put it. Cheerly for the tenant. Make it special. The tenant, come on, but I'm Margaret Williams. Do you remember me? Oh, yes, of course. Just didn't expect to see you here. Listen, try to tell you, we won't be sorry. Then I come to see you. What? About, what about my father's aunt Matthew? Murder. Listen, I'm terribly sorry about that. We just haven't been able to come up with anything on that. Well, I may have something. Are you sure you won't leave? Have something to eat? The tenant is really, this is very brilliant. Oh, Oh, sorry, go ahead, I'm listening. Could you m we move to that booth over there? Certainly. You see, it's the crackers. They, they make, that make the fish. 
I think my stepmother may have had something to do with it. Realize what he's saying, then tell me. He never loved him. He refused him to get what he wanted for himself. Queer, she used his name, his influence, so he could become a famous lady lawyer and be a partner with my father with his instant stature. An instant success. When did it all this start? Did this all start when your mother was still alive? Yes. Well, but he didn't have an affair with her. How can you be sure that I knew him? He's faithful to my mother all through, though, those years, years, while she was dying. When did they get together rently? After my mother died, he taught him to leave in the state of Supreme Court because he worked all his life for her, all his life, but he left it because he wanted, he wanted to be with her. Is that when they became partners? That was a bait. He did what he, he did what that for her. She admired him. Why would they she want to see him dead? My father came to visit me in Switzerland last vacation, then told me what a fool he'd been. How he, she finally told him she thought she was a, a bore, a tall, tiresome old man. She wanted a new arrangement. She tried to cry. Never seen him cry before. He had was to quit the firm, turn it over to her. Then they were there to live their separate lives. She didn't ask for divorce. Just that they have a share, share the house and nothing more. He would never stomach living a lie like that. He told her so. She just laughed at him. I put my round arm around him. I didn't know what else to do. So what did we do? He threatened to throw her out, out and close the office. How he dared to stand up to her? I think that's why he was killed. Now, now look, Margaret, you told me some reasons and maybe... The stepmother might have a motive, but they're, not, they're all true, I say. They weren't. You don't know, have any proof of anything. You don't have any evidence. You don't. You, all you ha have is assumptions we understand. Besides, how could she do it? What would she do? What would she do? Involve some other people? That would be very risky, wouldn't it? You see, I see the only problem way, maybe no, no, it's crazy. What is it? Just couldn't be the only possible way would be somehow there never was a kidnapping. She killed him and set him up to look that way. I said, I said, never said that. I just mean this crazy idea. Forget the idea of it. How do you go about proving something like that? Oh, goodness. I don't know how to do that. Listen, I think you have got a crazy idea here. I think you ought to forget about it. Well, I'll be in touch with you to turn it all right, all right. You know, they, they, they are, you know, you might be something in a position or a car seat. You saying something? I said there might be something in the position of car seat. What car seat? Your father's car. You know the night we picked off your father's car? Something that his car seat had been removed. Moved forward. I don't understand. Well, your father is a very tall man, isn't he? I mean, he's six foot or better. Well, well, whatever, Bob, whatever drove the car last, he moved the seat forward. Like a woman could be. And of course, there's your father's keys. What about them? We never found them. The keys weren't in the car. And later when we found a car of other body, keys one on the body either. So, do you ever notice just how out of habit when you get out of your car, you want to reach for the keys? You see, last person out of that car distinctly took the keys with him. You may or may have them. Okay, so don't, I'd like to speak to Claire Gumbo, please. Mrs. Williams, Mrs. Williams. What is it? I've got a telephone call. I came quite over. I didn't call you, I know that. My stepdaughter, Margaret. Well, how did you get in here? She was going to leave the door open. I don't say why. Why did she call you? She said she had something to show me. Margaret, Margaret, you want me to? Want me? Yes. The combo is here to see you. No. I think he's here to see us, both of us. You are? I thought you might like to know. Found his keys, my father's key ring. And in the bath in your bathroom. Margaret, you see, he say these are your father's keys, I don't know. Could you explain the put of these keys? Isn't it all that clear to me? Well, you see, Mrs. Williams, it's, it goes like this. The keys were not in the car. We're not in your husband's body. So we're, run, we're wondering what happened to them. Your father was never kidnapped. He came home that night and you killed, you killed him. Oh, Margaret, you don't know what you're talking about. Oh, yes, I do, Lieutenant. I couldn't do anything with her. That's true. You killed him? It's true, Lieutenant. How you know it's true? Now wait a moment, just one moment, just so sit down, sit down in that chair. Listen to me, Margaret. What are you saying might mean something except for one point. 
You knocked your father's keys. Margaret had a village watched. You had a locksmith up here yesterday. I got an invoice for every dental key you and had made. Now I'm getting going to overlook what you did this time. I want you to mind do you remember something? Forging evidence is a crime. But she killed him. There's no proof of that. She did it, I know it. And you know it. No, I don't know it. Yes, you do. Young lady, don't you ever do that again. How could you she think a thing like that, Lieutenant? I always knew that she resented me, but I never thought she would go this far. I'm going to have to tell you the truth, Mrs. Williams. I knew how she felt. You see the fact she came up to me the other night? She told me that she thought you were involved. I told you it was a far-fetched idea. Yes, but you did mention to her about those missing keys. You never mentioned them to me. There wasn't nothing among, you weren't among those. The little detail that was bothering you so much. Well, now, Mrs. Williams, if you were some remote chance your great stepfather been right, it would have been very smart of me to, to have told you, wouldn't it? I understand. Good afternoon, Mrs. Williams. To the combo. Thank you for straightening it, Margaret. Out. I appreciate it. Oh, it's just it's the only thing I could do. I mean, I just couldn't have accused mur you accused of murder on the wrong evidence. You know, you did it. I know it. I think you ought to see Doctor Margaret. Do you? Yes, I do. I think you're a very sick girl when you were listening. Yes, it's very difficult because I'm so sick. Margaret, why don't you go back to Switzerland? I put up my up a hotel. The school opens. I'm staying right here. Listen to me. You stay here eh, for as long as you believe. No one will let, no more little drama. I've no need to cut off your allowance. I'll tie it to a state. You'll be on social security before you can see a nick of it. Where are you all my friends for being Margaret? When you haven't had money to buy them any more, Miss Williams, this is Tom Clumbo. Williams, I was wondering, I might drop me by to see you. I've got something to show you. I think you'll really appreciate it. It's for you. So I'm stunned, huh? You know, I remembered how you could like gadgets. I thought, got a kick out of it. You know, there's something you could show at parties, something to amuse your friend with. We like, what? That. Would you like to tell me how you did it? Oh, there's nothing to it. I was one of those. I got one of those special phones of yours. Got a tape machine. Got a timer. Rigged it up. It was my what I was. I, I was at it. I'm very, very busy. I'm very busy, Ten. Would you like to tell me what this has to do with my husband's murder? You see, I can't get anything past you. You have really got me paid. You've well, if tell you what it is. It just shows that your husband would have been dead at the time of the phone call, that his voice couldn't have come from carefully edited in tapes from the machine. You know, you know, Clumbo, you're most likable in a shabby sort of way. Maybe it's the way you come slouching in with your slow, worm, shot worm bag of tricks. Mean tricks of humanity. They're seeing up the lighters, how many antidotes, but a family, your wife, you know. Yeah, yeah, the ten plumbo. Fumbling and stumbling. It's always a juggle that he's after. I imagine there's more often that he's not successful. Appreciate the compliment, Mrs. Williams. I particularly appreciate it coming from you. I must tell you, I was disappointed in you, the I really am very disappointed. How's that? You reduce yourself with veiled threats in the stations of Vaudeville. Now, what did you really expect a tree by this place of stunt? Do you expect me to throw myself at your feet? Actually, no. No, I didn't think you'd do that. What? Well, then, you've good. What good did I do? I just sit down and it up with all the other, de all the other details. Out of all, you're able to see what really might be, have happened. Might have, well, could have, isn't. These aren't phases that hold up court. They're thrown out for lack of evidence. Yeah, but you know, justice is a strange counsellor. If some people's not enough to be acquitted, but if some people's not also necessary to convince the public, reduce the guilty party as well, familiar with the Barry Mason school of justice, Lieutenant, not a bad tactic. Listen to my ruin, my repetition, my execration. Craig to doubt about me, but then they're always the other one. <coughs> I could always show you that I could always show. That you were hounding me, maliciously pursuing me, persecuting me. You're playing a game we can attend. Either arrest me or get out of here. I'm going to have to tell you the truth. The department took me, me off the case. 
There's nothing, there's nothing, just nothing concrete, nothing to give a DNA. There's, there's murder on out to Philippon. They got, want me to look into. I couldn't bear to leave without saying goodbye. That's right. That's right. After all, I almost forgot to say it. Goodbye, Mrs. Williams. Goodbye, Lieutenant. Hello. How do you like? How do you like Leslie? Just giving you the same kind of welcome. Home you gave my father. Stop, Leslie. Well, the first one it was a blank, but who knows? Next one may be the real thing. Margaret, just let me go by there. There's nothing in that gun. There's nothing getting nothing in that gun. Margaret, my father's never kidnapped. He never came home. That night you killed him. I know you did it. I knew it. I know it. Margaret, is that what you want out there? I want you out of this house tonight. Even if you throw out Leslie, I won't stop. I'll hound you. I'll hit him at you. Embarrass you. Get pet. You used to be my trust account. He was on all my trust account to pay the ransom. And now you think you can get away with my share of state too? You're not going to get away with it. I want that's mine. You want to negotiate, don't you? I want just what I just want what's coming to me. I'll give you two hundred and twenty thousand a year for well that would take you into your trust. My trust money has has was for twenty five a year. Plus donors twenty thousand is all in cash. You are some little girl, all right. If you if you are on a plane tomorrow, excuse me. I've a lot of packing to do. When you arrive at Zurich, Mr Steiner, we'll meet you at the airport. You'll take you to the bank bolt and open an account for you. Goodbye, Margaret. Goodbye, Leslie. And the turn to Columbo, Mrs Williams. Assuming or extricating? No. Just waiting. You seem depressed. Be the criminal that criminal get away? Come on, I'm, oh, I'll buy you a drink of consolation. I hate to see you get unhappy. I know, it's very nice of you. I have a heart. I do, yes. What will you have, Lieutenant? After you, Sherry. Have a root beer. Root beer? Lieutenant, you always manage to keep make me feel decrepit. I'm so, gee, I never knew that. I'm sorry if it's nothing personal. I understand that, I understand. I'm going to miss you, Lieutenant. You and, you and all your fascinating little details. No, you're something. You really are something. I'm going to try and make it that as take that as a compliment. Oh, it is. It is. Believe me, to you. Hey, here's looking at you, Mrs. Williams. You know, for white. Well, there I thought I'd never get her. All those details. They don't didn't make it. There's nothing coercive. Then I thought it's going to be the money. What money? The ransom money. The person engineers a fake kidnapping. They have to get have the hidden money hidden somewhere. Now I cleared it out. Cleared you out of free out of range to ransom. Feed you out of the way out of range to ransom. So I thought I'm gonna find a way a full set of use of ransom money. Take thank you very much, you know. Seems like another idea for everyone. I would know I did it I know I did it for my wife, but I believe in in I believe in it because Mr Williams you had a conscience. You are your that's your witness that's our wit your witness. Did it ever occur to you? A very fright through people who take money and forget about a murder. You didn't I didn't did it. I knew it wasn't no conscious for them it's your imagination. You won't conceive of anyone being indifferent that that one what are you? Um and you are greedy. That's why as bright as you are, you're not bright as you believe that Margaret would could be brought get to the parent. Come on, get to the point. Here, or here's the total point, Mrs. Williams, you see. You were set up, arranged it up all with Margaret. I told Margaret that if she wanted to be near you, she had to force you to use her answer money. You're very quick, when a tenant, when a tenant, lucky to tenant. No, congratulations, you're very smart. So are you, thank you. For, forgive this rain about the British case. But you had to make me sure that the money was in there before we arrested you. I had no alternative. Would you like to finish your sherry? Don't think I don't want it any more. Would you advise Mrs. Williams be to the rights and drive her uptown? I'd be tower ten, please. Oh yeah, be with you in one minute. Would you mind? I guess if I sign this for this, I'm a police attendant, Columbo. I guess would that be all right? Congratulations. I raised that all that Margaret. I told Margaret 
Uh, she ever wanted to nail you? She had a false you to use around some money. You know, if not, you're very lucky to send no congratulations, you're very smart. So you're thinking, forget trade at uh, a briefcase. But we had to make sure the money was in in there before we rescued you. No alternative. Would you like to finish your sherry? Don't think I want it any more. Would you forgive Miss Williams for her rights and drive her downtown? Be a dollar ten, please. Oh yeah. Be with you in one minute. Would you mind if I sign I thought I've signed for this? Um from the police, the tenant command room. Guess that'll be right. I'll thank you very much.